Center in the Square has been a resounding success. And what an ingenious idea to give the space, but also to support all those mundane operating expenses so that the arts organizations could use their own funds for their own program. I'm not sure whose idea that was originally because I wasn't involved in that, but I think it was a real good idea. And with the nine million people who visited it the first 25 years are a testament to that. It's a children's fun place. It's like an amusement square. But it's acting, theater, ballet, opera, science, history, and art, and all in one building. I think Center is so unique and so different um, than most other cultural organizations in that it brings people together under one roof. Uh, there's a variety here, there's an energy here that it's hard to replicate. And I think what we're getting ready to do to it's going to increase that a lot. I rarely am involved with a project where I can say straight out, for every dollar you give, two will be brought in from other sources and matched to make a difference. So $27 million at a cost to this community of nine is going to be invested in downtown. Roanoke County School System used to be able to take children to all of the individual places they wanted to take the children, whether it was the Science Museum or the Art Museum. And all of a sudden, the county cut the school abilities to take the children more than one trip a year. And Leonard and I had some conversation at some point about, gee, if everything was in one place, that would be great. It really became a, a project as a result of a group of people, including Betty Carr Muse, David Good, Bobby Fishburne, Frank Clement, others, Jack Hancock, all began to realize in the process of looking for a place for Mill Mountain Theater, which was then called Mill Mountain Playhouse, after the playhouse burned on top of the mountain, that there were probably other arts organizations, nonprofits in the community, who also had a space needs. Uh, at the very least, all of them were duplicating a lot of unnecessary expenses through uh, occupying space separately. We were all on multiple boards. I think the only board we weren't on was the Arts Council board. But the others we crossed over, and so we knew what their shortcomings were, where they were at that point in time, which was what a street front on Franklin Road for the History Museum and an old schoolhouse out in the county for the Science Museum. And the theater had no home. And then the Arts Center was in South Roanoke, which was a little out of the way for some people. My father, George Cartlidge Sr., was one of the seven or eight people who had this idea 28 years ago. And the McGuire Building was just sort of not being used. It was just sitting here. And he just thought it would be a great place to do something like this. And he and Betty Carr, used to, Muse, used to sit across the street and talk about what they could do with this. A group of business types, Jack Hancock, Frank Clement, Ed Mattern, Bob Woody, um, and others, got the idea, if we buy that building and we renovate it for your custom use as an art museum or as a history museum or as a science museum or as an arts council, would you come downtown in, into a space that's available by public transportation and by walk, walking distance of a, a lot of the neighborhoods around downtown, and we'll give you the space. Of the 23 letters we sent out, we got five responses, and those were the five organizations that came in to Center in the Square when it opened December the 8th, uh, 1983. None of them were attracting very many people, and they all had financial problems, which most cultural organizations do. So the idea was to put them in a building where they could spend all their time raising money for programming.
The original five uh, was Science Museum, the History Museum, the Art Museum, the Mill Mountain Theater, and the Arts Council. We provide all of the basic uh, building services, security, maintenance, uh, custodial, all the space itself is free of charge. Uh, we do simple things like replace light bulbs. We do complicated things like make significant repairs to the HVAC system. So these organizations all have a free home, which allows them to focus their money and their efforts on quality programming. So that's the key to Center. We've had over 50 different cities visit Roanoke to look at Center in the Square. Center continues to do what it started out to do in 1983, and that is to serve as a destination for people who are visiting the valley. Uh, one, if, if you have someone coming to, come to town to visit you, more than likely you'll say, well, let's go down to the Market Square, let's go down to Center in the Square. So with Center in the Square in place, the market improved, making it a place where visitors like to come, where families like to bring their friends, and all of this creates a, a dynamic of tourism that we did not have during the years uh, when the market was decaying. Centers coming here cleaned up downtown. There was drinking, there were drugs, there was a little bit of crime. We've never had a bad crime scene. There were prostitutes. And uh, quote, quote, nice people didn't want to come downtown at night. Another ingenious thing that the leadership of Center in the Square did, Jack Hancock and Nick Taubman did this, persuaded uh, Senator John Warner to intercede with the then Secretary of Housing and Urban Development, Jack Kemp, to get him to waive the requirement that parking garages built with UDAG money, that was Urban Development Assistance Grants, had to be freestanding. But uh, Jack Kemp waived that requirement so the parking garage could be physically adjoining to the center's building, which meant we could say to the wives of, of uh, families, you can come downtown, park in the second, third, fourth, or fifth floor, and never have to go outside. And that was critical to the fundraising effort. Center in the Square story is about community. It shows us when we come together for something worthwhile, we can do great things. As bankers, we invest in the people and places that make Southwest Virginia a great place to live. If you would like to join us and support Center in the Square's future, you can pick up information or make a contribution at BB&T, Hometown Bank, Stellar One Bank, SunTrust, or Valley Bank. Be a part of the next chapter of Center in the Square's exciting story. Together, we can do great things. Hi, this is Dick and Dave from Q.99 inviting you to be a part of Center in the Square's exciting building and renovation project. Now these are real plans and real opportunities that promise to make a real difference in the lives and futures of others. Visit centerinthesquare.org, get all the details and make your contribution. Or stop by any SunTrust, Valley Bank, Hometown Bank, BB&T, or Stellar One to pick up a brochure or to make your contribution. So join us, be a part of our community's future. Together we can do great things. This is very likely the, the most significant project in Roanoke and in this region that we have had in years. And I say that because it serves so many needs. There will be seven different organizations packed into one building. Whether it's science or history or theater or African American culture, whether it's ballet or opera. It'll be here. And those kind of art activities are at the very soul of a person. That makes this facility extremely important for this region. We are going to raise $9 million of private funding among the businesses and citizens of the Valley. And by raising that $9 million and through the sale of historic and new market tax credits, uh, for which the project is eligible, then uh, we can leverage that $9 million in funds raised into the $27 million project. 
One of the most exciting pieces for me is the heavy emphasis in the entire building for science. When this process began, we started throwing out the center in the square a lot of really, we thought, very cool ideas to develop the roof and, and engage the space in the atrium. And so it's very exciting to me to see that come to life you know, throughout the building, not only in terms of the fourth and fifth floor that is the Science Museum. We just feel like we can use this entire building to be a center for learning. We decided at Virginia Tech that it would be really good for our students to design in teams exhibits for this reinvented museum. So Nancy came and made some presentations, uh, our presentation to the group. We had the students do some research each week on different topics like you know, what, what kinds of science issues are being talked about in the, in the newspapers recently, what are the controversies, how do people learn about science. We gave them some resource materials to start with to think about the whole process of getting people excited and engaged in learning about science. We're hoping that that investment and that energy that the students brought will in fact influence in the end how these exhibits work and, and what's in the museum. The first thing I do is go to the science museum. Over there is a green screen. You press this button and like you just do a kind of pose and your shadow, it takes a picture of your shadow and it just stays there. We serve uh, school systems throughout Western Virginia. We actually serve as 40 school divisions, and we have uh, numerous underserved programs here offered as well. We want to engage children at a very early age. I like to tell people that the Science Museum is the beginning pipeline in terms of science-based careers for this region. And if we can get people engaged with science at a very early age, we're much more likely to keep them engaged for later on when they need to major in a topic. Studies are showing that across the country we lose children around third grade to science. And so we can have a vital presence in engaging them for science and keeping them engaged and then getting them into those careers in college. It's great because they have middle school labs set up just for middle schoolers. So when you bring a group, um, they have a cow eye dissection lab and they have a DNA lab. And then the um, film that they show in the planetarium is always related somehow to life science. So there are a lot of special opportunities besides the regular exhibits for middle schoolers. When you come to the Science Museum on a field trip, you have a much broader view of things here. And the two that we typically schedule are how things move. And we're talking about gravity and force and how things move back and forth and that kind of thing. So they bring a lot of uh, little toys that move in all kinds of different ways and they're allowed to experiment with those. And the other one we like is mi called Mixing It Up and we have to teach a unit on matter. So we talk about the properties of matter and they bring a lot of things for us to mix and, and the children love that. They have little cups and they mix things together and they see if things dissolve or do not dissolve and it's a real experiment kind of thing and they really feel important when they do all that. I got involved because my grandmother was here and at that time I was pretty much attached to her hip. <laughs> they had moved here um, when my grandfather got sick and uh, I'd spent a lot of time with them at her house and I would spend weekends with them and I would always, I would spend as much time as possible that I could with her because she taught me to sew, she taught me to cook. So when she was here, then I decided, you know, well I'll go in with her on a Saturday or a Sunday and see what's going on and that just kind of grew into that volunteer aspect and led to bigger and better things. You, you're giving so much uh, of yourself when, when you do this. You're, you're expending part of yourself to these children and, and hoping that they'll go away with at least one little grain of something or other that you wanted them to learn. This is probably my favorite part of the entire museum because it holds my memories of how proud I am to have her as a mother. She instills what is in our mission statement, lifelong learning. I like the Science Museum, but the History Museum where you can try on costumes, that's my favorite place. I think a lot of our local residents don't think about the fact that Roanoke is a destination. 
Roanoke is the largest municipality in southwestern Virginia. It's considered to be an arts and cultural capital, and there are a lot of visitors from out of town and even out of the country. We've had visitors from as far away as Australia. Uh, we get visitors who come from the sister cities, Wanju, Korea, for example. And those individuals come here to Roanoke for a different experience. They contribute a lot to our local community just in terms of local taxes, tourism taxes. The Center and the Square of Renovations taking place will be a wonderful marketing opportunity for us to reopen the building with lots of uh, new exhibits. We are going to have to relocate the History Museum. We can't afford to close completely for a long period of time, but we will relocate hopefully to another storefront location downtown and we will maintain public operations as much as possible until the renovations here are done. But the benefit of that is that we can also schedule our museum renovations at the same time as Center on the Square's overall renovations. It will show the region that Center on the Square and Roanoke is a leader in arts and culture. All the companies that are working on the project are local or regional companies, so it's going to help with employment. And the nice part about it is because of the tax credits that are being used to leverage monies for the work is really not going to have a deleterious effect on the local economy. Um, it will put money into the economy through jobs and through tourism dollars when it's complete, but it's not draining a significant amount of money out of the community. I know that lots of money is poured into regions, you know, very large cities of the country, but, you know, our children in rural areas deserve the same and the benefits, the same educational opportunities that they do. Our children need to be able to compete wherever they go throughout the country or throughout the world, and that's really important for us to think about. Center in the Square and its cultural organizations add life to our community by educating, engaging, enlightening, and inspiring. As healthcare professionals, we believe that the Center in the Square renovation project will make a difference in the lives and futures of others. And that is why we're making a special effort to support this campaign. So join us in supporting Center in the Square and keep the heart of our region beating for generations to come. Together, we can do great things. Center in the Square is one of our area's greatest success stories. A catalyst for economic development, Center inspired a new era of vibrancy in downtown Roanoke. As lawyers, we support solutions that lead people to understanding and resolution. We believe in solving problems. Center in the Square's renovation plans will improve our region's economy and our quality of life. With your support, Center will be able to reach, teach, and transform countless lives. Join us in being part of our region's future. Together we can do great things. It started as a farm implement building. It was built to hold tractors and combines and shovels and rakes and seed and all those things that supported our more agrarian society back in the early 1900s. After that, it was uh, an appliance store and it was a food store and it was just different, an old furniture store, just different kinds of things. And at the time that it was purchased, it was vacant. So it was bought from the family that originally built the building and uh, it was turned into Center and Square, which is, in my opinion, the most dynamic corner of Roanoke. The electrical system, the HVAC system, uh, all those infrastructure elements of the building need to be brought up to speed. We have designed this building using the LEED rating system, which looks at really all the building components. Uh, the materials that were selected, a lot of them from the carpets to the paints on the wall, uh, promote good indoor air quality. They don't, they don't have the chemicals that might come off and into the air. Many of the materials are selected for their recycled content or their ability to be recycled in the future. Many of the materials are selected because they are locally produced. You know, I felt like that when we started this renovation that we should be socially responsible and strive for LEED certification. We'll be able to certify this building at least at the silver level. 
So when we renovate this building, our operating costs are projected to be lower than they are now, not higher. They're doing a lot of exposed structural systems and mechanical systems, so all those sorts of things can be utilized in teaching children again. Um, and instead of covering them all up, we're exposing them, making them fun, making them a real part of the design. Uh, so that too can be educational as well. We decided to suggest that maybe they have the largest living reef aquarium in the country and how the Roanoke River ties in, goes through the state of Virginia and goes into the ocean and how all of that's interrelated. Uh, Chesapeake Bay, the, the waterfall shed for that as well. That expanded into some other types of aquariums like seahorses. On the fifth floor, uh, some area where we're expanding the Science Museum, we're going to build a new butterfly habitat. It will be a, a place to be full of light and tropical plants and butterflies and as you walk in that space you experience a very warm and living environment and the butterflies will be flying all around you. I work with a committee with Nancy McCricker with folks from Virginia Tech who are in the entomology department at Virginia Tech. They have many wonderful ideas about learning the life cycles of the butterflies which is very important to the school children. They will see the stages of the butterflies going through complete metamorphosis. There will have a puparium where the chrysalises will be hanging up and they can actually see the butterflies hatch out. And they hope to use native butterflies, so they will get to learn more about the natural history of the area. Everything that we're adding will be used as, as an education piece for kids and for families and for adults who are looking at how to improve their own homes, how to improve their businesses. So when they go to the rooftop and they see our metering system about how much electricity we're using that day and how much electricity has been provided by the solar panels and by the wind turbines and how much we're saving, they'll learn too and they'll learn how to improve their homes, they'll learn how to improve their businesses. All that goes back to being socially responsible. We are extremely happy about being at Center in the Square. <clears throat> the move to Center in the Square did not come without many hours of deliberation about where we needed to be and what we needed to look like and what we needed to do. The board spent countless hours trying to make that decision and get feedback from multiple people. And the board based the decision on the fact that we believe that in the city of Roanoke, no larger than what it is, all the arts and culture centers need to be together. We believe that Center in the Square is an established institution and you've got school children coming from all over the region to be a part of this and to experience history and science and art. And we believe that the African American culture piece needs to be a part of that so that they can experience that as well. I think Harrison being here is really going to sort of finish the picture. It's going to bring a different feel, a, sort of a, a cultural mix that's important to, to Roanoke, to being what we are. And I can tell a story that we haven't told very well yet. And a lot more people uh, come through Center are going to get to experience that. Prior to this, it was really difficult for people to get to us uh, because of our location. Um, 523 Harrison Avenue has been wonderful for us. We've been there 25 years. That's where it all began, you know. There would be no Harrison Museum of African American Culture if it were not for 523 Harrison Avenue and the Harrison School. So certainly, you know, it has been a wonderful place to be and that sort of thing. But in order for us to move forward, become more accessible to more folks and especially to children, we needed to be here in the hub of activities in the city of Mono. In terms of the importance of this project, I really feel like that it is the really the heart of the entire area. And uh, people are used to coming into downtown Roanoke and uh, enjoying the arts and the culture and the history. And it's all under one roof here at the center in the square. And uh, this is where people seek to come, both as locals and as visitors. And uh, it's the place where they feel welcomed and where they can quickly find out what makes this place tick. You know, whether you use it personally, it has impacted you economically because the new manufacturing business, one of the first questions those people ask is, what is the quality of life? What does Roanoke have to offer my employees? What does it have to offer all these high-powered people we're trying to get to come to this community? And this is a real, this is a real important part of that. The 
financing is being provided on the tax credit side by five local banks. There's a specific initiative by healthcare professionals to stimulate interest and support from people in the healthcare community, very similar in the legal community. Um, there's an effort there. There's also another component, um, the Kresge Foundation, which is a national foundation um, out of Detroit, has um, provided a $750,000 challenge grant to help us get to the $9 million mark. Uh, it's a great validation of the project. Uh, Kresge is very selective about who, who they give to, and to be able to compete and win on a national level is, is a big uh, validation of the project and a, a big win for Roanoke. And so we're 10% away from reaching our goal. Uh, given everything that has happened in the last two years is really uh, un unbelievable. We have the benefit of Center in the Square because good people before us took it upon themselves to be responsible for making it happen. We have the opportunity to do the same thing for our children, our grandchildren, our neighbors, um, by taking it upon ourselves. Um, to make this project happen for future generations. And I think there are a lot more folks like that out there who don't get the opportunity to be a part of something like this. And I hope that if they can hear my voice, they'll consider themselves invited. This is Dick and Dave from Q99 inviting you to be a part of Center in the Square's exciting building and renovation project. Now these are real plans and real opportunities that promise to make a real difference in the lives and futures of others. Visit centerinthesquare.org, get all the details and make your contribution. Or stop by any SunTrust, Valley Bank, Hometown Bank, bb and or Stellar One to pick up a brochure or to make your contribution. So join us, be a part of our community's future. Together we can do great things.